Hello and welcome to another cooking uh, show with the older Taylor cowgirl. <laughs> Eddie's in school. Um, well, I dedicate this cooking show to our bunny, Mrs. Bun Bun Hasenpfeffer, whom we rescued about five years ago. Uh, Eddie and her mom found her in front of the elementary school. Eddie went and um, was a tiny little bun bun bunny, uh, white, and it turned into a huge bunny. Uh, I think it's a New Zealand giant, that's what they told us at the vet. And uh, Mrs. Bun Bun Hasenpfeffer unfortunately passed away last Saturday. We found her in the morning dead in her uh, bunny hutch. So rest in peace, Bun Bun. We all love you. And we will meet again in the in heaven. I'm sure there are animals in heaven. Okay, um, speaking from garden, I will put, um, as I promised, a little video f uh, uh, after that uh, cooking show on my video. Um, it will show you my garden herbs, which I have on shelves uh, uh, across the... Uh, the backyard uh, where the neighbor's house starts and I have it on shelves because we don't want to grow anything too close to the neighbor's house. Uh, you have to be two feet away here in California. So we decided to put it on shelves and this also prevents that our dogs uh, pee on it. <laughs> our two dogs run in that garden. I will show you the construction site the three construction sites of my husband who is working on the high riser and we separated that part of the garden with a fence so that the dogs go, don't go where my vegetables grow. I will show you all that later so, to make it, so that what I tell you makes some sense to you. What we make today is I decided to revisit my grandma's uh, my German grandma's cabbage roll recipe <clears throat> and make it a little bit different so that it is easy to make in an RV. We plan our next trip to Humboldt County where we have uh, riding, uh, trail riding at the uh, uh, Baccarat, it was the Baccarats in Auric and we uh, also will stay, meet a friend in Fortuna and we'll uh, go the Avenue of the Giants and I really, really look forward to that. But I want to, I don't want to load up the RV with too much food. It's all a weight issue. And uh, if I'm planning the meals, the stuff I've taken with me. And I think that recipe is one of the ones I take with me because you don't need a lot of refrigerated or frozen stuff for it. So it's also an important issue. It's always a space issue and a weight issue in an RV. So let's just start and then I show you what I make, okay? Um, first thing you need, and we had it on sale this year, uh, this week, uh, Savoy cabbage from, uh, I have it from Nopel, but you get them everywhere. And uh, I, I cut the core, the little, the little core in the middle out. And we make that in the, I, uh, in the iPod, because the iPod is a ticket for me in the RV to take with me. It's a one pot meal. You don't need a lot of uh, other stuff. So one pot meal. So let me get you down to see what I'm doing. And that's a good picture. Here's my iPod. I put the little trivet in. We put the cabbage in, uh, core down. Together with, um, let's say two cups of water. And um, we put it on seal, close it, put it on seal, and manual for one minute. 
This will make sure the leaves are nice and soft. That's it. Well then, manual. One minute, high pressure, unseal. Yeah, we are done, okay? And uh, I, I use the Savoy cabbage, and my grandma did that. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Uh, because um, the leaves are softer, so you don't have these um, um, hard veins like you have in white cabbage. You can make that recipe with white cabbage. You know probably a lot of cabbage roll recipes from Russia and po po Poland uh, who make it with white cabbage. My Oma always used Savoy cabbage because the leaves are softer, it's nicer in the mouth, uh, it's not tough to eat, and we, ch we children like the taste of Savoy cabbage better. That's just it, so I stick to it. But I do not use soy kernels like in the recipe I did three years ago in my video. Today I do something different. And let's just wait until the leaves are done and then we talk again. So we're back. Uh, I did not wait for the natural release. I um, uh, opened the valve after one minute pressure time and let's get that over here in the sink. This is my my cabbage. Nice. And it's just a little, you know, how can I say that um, it's not a lot of, let me get some, might be hot to take out. It's it's just a, that it's just a little bit of crunch, uh, a, a, a little bit of softness. Okay, so we take that out, put it on there. Oh, see the, the the leaves are only falling. See that? Yeah, that's exactly how, how we want it. Now we take the water out. You don't need this trivet anymore. The iPod is on, on off. And uh, first we fix what we put in the iPod together with the cabbage. Let me get that cabbage over here. Take the trivet off now. It's all done. The trivet comes with the iPod, so you don't need to buy it extra. Let's let that cool a little. We can use it later. Okay, so what you need here. I, I chopped coarsely uh, one medium onion. You take half of the onion and put it in here. That gives the cabbage rolls a little bit of leg to stand. I will also put Um, hold on. I will also put in a little package of pico de gallo and uh, have to get open with glitchy hands. <laughs> oh, there you go. So we put half a packet in the. Um, In the little in the iPod, the genius thing on that meal is you really only need one pot. You know, there's no need for another pot. We keep that for the filling of the cabbage rolls. So now we need one cup of vegetable broth, and as always, I used boiling water together with better than bouillon garlic, vegan broth. You can use any vegan broth you want. Uh, if you have meat eaters in your family, like I am, um, you make one batch vegan cabbage rolls and you make another batch um, with ground meat. The, the spices are the same and it's easy to make and you have for both family parts, you have a meal in your RV. Doesn't take a lot of uh, work or equipment or ingredients. So we have that. 
Then we use uh, marinara sauce. I used to use the one from Trader Joe's, Zero Fat, because I follow um, Dr. McDougall, and you know, you eat as less fat as possible. Zero fat is always the best, but you don't always get it. The one at Trader Joe's was zero fat, but I can't get it anymore. I can't find it. And so I used the Pommy marinara sauce, which is 1% zero sa uh, saturated and 1% fat total. So that's my best choice I get these days. And I love the marinara sauce from them. Okay. So what we use is one cup, uh, sorry, two cups of marinara sauce. I thought I had a... Oh, let's just that. One cup for now. One cup for now. Put that in so that you have some moisture in here. Okay. I put a little bit of pepper in the sauce, um, not too much because we have it in the in the filling later to taste. Maybe an eighth teaspoon pepper. I don't put any any um, salt in it because I already have the the vegetable broth in it. Okay, so we got that done, and now we prepare the filling. Let's. Put that aside. Let's put that cabbage here. And I want to show you, because of course I have my garden herbs and I use fresh garden herbs. So um, let's start with the filling. I use in the RV, I get this garden ground beef, because that's the only one you have to put in the freezer in the RV for that one. You stick it uh, two minutes in the microwave and it's done, so you don't have to uh, skill it, you don't have to fry it first hand. So now we open it. As I said, it was in the microwave before it. So we put it here. This is how it looks vegan ground beef, garden. That's what I'm using today. And uh, where's my rice? And I will add, I bought that at No Pill. It's uh, organic Landberg brown rice blend. It's red rice, uh, brown rice blend, black rice, all organic. You put it in the microwave for a minute, two minutes, two minutes, it's done. looks like that so I add it to this now I can mix all of that and now we add our spices as I said uh, you can do that with ground beef if you have beef eaters in a second batch for this vegan batch I have um, three vegan eaters and I have two two to three carnivores depending on if we, our guest will eat with us i have a friend in fortuna we will probably invite for a dinner okay so we got that now we add liquid smoke uh it doesn't really matter which flavor you you choose but we, we use a tablespoon liquid smoke You use a tablespoon, I use that in the tomato mark, I use that in the thing, uh, in the tube. This is Toscanini tomato paste, it has no fat, so I use that. Got to make it a little uh, um, smoother. We add the pico de gallo, of course. Then um, here 
I have uh, a teaspoon garlic powder. I have uh, an eight teaspoon salt. I have a teaspoon black pepper, a teaspoon paprika. I have caraway seeds, uh, two teaspoons. And I think this is it here. Yeah, did I say paprika? Yeah. Oh yeah, and um, cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon cayenne pepper. So I put that one in. And now I have to space it to chop something. Of course, we put our chopped onions in. It's half and half a medium onion, coarsely chopped. And now. Um, we start with my uh, greens from the garden. So I explain what I have. Of course, everybody knows that. It's basil. So you pluck the leaves off the stem. I usually roll it, roll the leaves, and then cut it. And you need one and a half teaspoons basil. I already cut some, so, uh, so that it doesn't take so long because I don't want to have that video too long. By the way, if you don't want to see my garden, just stop the video after the recipe, it's fine. Okay, basil. The next one is. Um, um, Garden lovage, and you know, garden lovage is also used Magie herb, also known as Magie herb. In German, it's Liebstöckel, and it's what it's in those Magie liquid spices. But I prefer the fresh one because you don't have all these other unhealthy ingredients. I just wanted to show you the bottle. So this is how it looks. It grows in my garden. It's usually like a jungle when it really takes off. And uh, you don't need much, it's a very potent herb, so don't take too much. Maybe an eighth teaspoon. Cut the stems off and just chop it. I would chop it rather fine so that it spreads throughout the, the mixture. Uh, we have marjoram from my garden and how you the way you do it is you go against the the, the way the, the leaves grow and then you just rip it off from the stem okay again you you chop it marjoram is also very potent I would say half a teaspoon I think that's what I took. I love marjoram. I love the, the taste of marjoram. Sweet marjoram. Okay. Let's put that here. And then uh, we have um, flat Italian parsley from my garden. Of course I don't want the stems so I just pluck off the leaves. If there's a little stem in there I don't care but I don't really want all the stems in there. So I take the stems off. And now we cut it again. We chop it. It's not hard. There's some stems still. Here, Easter bowl, by the way. It's Easter. <laughs> and that's this is, this is my fresh herbs from the garden. As I, again, I show you 
what I have out there. I have medicinal herbs with uh, like a, the, the high top, and I have kitchen herbs like basil and parsley and other stuff. Lots of stuff. I show you. Okay, so we come here. Now we, of course, mix everything together a little bit. I like to go in with the hand and see how um, dry it is. So it has to stick together a little bit. I think I put a little bit more tomato paste in it. Let's say a tablespoon. Yeah, that will do it. And I just go in with the hand. What the hell? What, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, that feels better now. It depends on what you use, you know, if you add vegetables or if you add uh, soaked soy curls, the texture is different. You can do a flex happy egg, add a flex egg if you want, or more tomato paste. It's up to you. So, and now we get our, our cabbage roll, our cabbage leaves. One leaf. Uh, use about a quarter, a quarter a cup of filling. Start with the where the core is, and then fold it in, kind of like a burrito. Okay. Leave it here. Next one. And the leaves are, are going off the. The head really easy because it is so soft now. Again, we put it in, roll it in, roll it up and roll it up. Number two, you will get about six cabbage rolls in there in one batch. Take the nicest leaves, you know. Here is a nice one. Here is a nice one. Again, from the core you roll it in and fold the sides and then roll up the, the rest, like a burrito. See? See how easy that goes off? It peels off like nothing. I don't use the outer ones, I usually toss them, you know, like I do with salads and stuff. Okay. Fold it in, fold it in, roll it up. Now we have already four. And you see, everything is basically done when you use these. Uh, nothing is raw or something, so you don't get food poisoning or anything. And it won't, it will only take a minute in the iPod to make it, to have it done. Three, five. And as you have rice and that ground meat, and that vegan meat in there, you don't need any extra side dishes. It's one, it's a one pot meal. It's really good. Okay, let's start with six. Let's see how far we get. So you lay it with the folding thing on the knees over here. Two, number three, four, five, six. And they can be, I think I get one more in. They can be tied together, no problem. So we get another leaf. A 
nice one. Okay. And see, I have a lot of uh, filling left, so I can make another batch later. I just want to demonstrate to you how it works. Okay, so we have seven cabbage rolls in there. Now you take the rest of the pommy and pour it over the cabbage rolls. Very important. So we want to cover them. And this is it. Now we can take the lid. <clears throat> Close it. Seal it. And on manual, you use one minute and let it go. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's our cabbage rolls. And isn't that easy? That's a perfect meal in the RV for nomads or people who are on vacation. And uh, seven, seven cabbage rolls feeds at least three people, if not more. So you can go ahead and make a second batch with that or um, you can take variations if you don't want that garden. You can use black beans, you know. I did that before, or like I did in my, I linked to the other recipe underneath um, my video where I have the recipe for this one, so that you have both recipes. And uh, both are good, both are great. And um, again, if you want to make it with meat for the carnivores, that will be great too. Uh, let's let it cook, and then I show you how it looks like. Okay, see you later. All right, it was a minute uh, pressure cooking in the iPod. No natural release. We turn off the iPod and put the seal on the release and let it all steam out. It takes about three, four minutes, three minutes, you know. And now we open the iPod. I put it down again. Let you look at all the stuff we do. Just put it a little. Okay, iPod. Thing. I take a little tongue. No, we are not done yet, but I show you what's going on. So what we do now is we take our cabbage rolls out. Ooh, they look good, don't they? If they get a little loose, it doesn't matter. You don't want to put. Uh, some people put, um, you know, toothpicks in there. Or, uh, I don't like it because it's uh, you have to figure, uh, you know, pull it out, and I don't like that. Four, five, six. Now one more. Okay. Okay. What you do now is, um, what I do, I take uh, two tablespoons water and one tablespoon starch, cold water, of course, swirl it, oh, and put that on, on um, saute so that it stays, that you have a hot, hot um, sauce, and then, uh, First you swirl it in cold water, you don't want to have clumps in there. And then we put it in there, so you get the creamier sauce. Mmm, looks really good. Look at that sauce, can you see it? Yum yum. So you let it just come up to a little boil, not much. Yeah, already boiling, see? So that's it. Can turn it off. If see, see, see why that meal is so easy to make when you are on the RV. Uh, when you are on the RV, let me. Oh, let's. Well, I leave you down because I want to show you what I'm doing. Okay. When you are up at the RV, you go. You, you make it until it uh, is in the iPod. 
one minute high pressure cooking iPod, program it, go to the swimming pool, to the lake, play a round of horseshoe, wait for your gas, come back. Uh, if you need longer, it goes on warm, so you can leave it warm in the iPod, it's, it's not gonna burn or something. So, um, it's nice to take that big one in the middle, put it on the... Uh, it is a one pot meal, it has rice and vegetables and everything in it, so we, you don't really need uh, an additional dish. We put some sauce out. And this is how you serve it. And now, of course, we have to try it. So I'm taking the knife, cut it in the middle to show you how it looks in the middle. Very nice. Then we try it. Mm. I do not need more salt. It's up to you. I don't need, I don't. At that point, you can always put something in the sauce, but it's really not necessary. Look at that. Let's put some, some sauce in. A little bit more sauce. It's perfect. Okay, that's your one pot, iPod, cabbage roll meal revisited. I hope you like it. Whoops. And I see you again next time. Part oh, don't forget, there's a um, um, my kitchen, my garden part is attached to that video. Next time when I cook, I show you part three of the garden part when my husband has its, has my vegetable, my high riser done. You know, my husband is, when I do something, when I have a project, I plan the project, I do the project, I clean up. My husband plans three projects at once, mowing the lawn, uh, rotor till, the high riser dirt, uh, mounting uh, up new boards, painting new boards, and every little plan in his has has its construction site. So I have like three construction sites now in the garden, and he's doing it. Next week it it will all be done, but he makes a lot of mess and it takes a while. And then he has a different way to approach tasks. So he thinks a lot about it, and he puts all the tasks together, and then it takes a while, and then it's all done. I do one thing after the other, boom, 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 boom. I never have a lot of, that's why I like that meal too, because you look at my kitchen, it's it's not very messy, you know. It's it's a easy cooking meal, one pot. Um, anyway, part three will be on the next, of the garden tour will be on the next cooking video. For today, I say goodbye. And I hope wherever you are, have a great Easter. And uh, remember, Jesus died for all of us, so that we don't have um, we, we we don't have to do sacrifices or anything. He he was the ultimate sacrifice for all of us, so that we can go into heaven when we repent our sins. Happy Easter to all of you, and see you again at another cooking show with the Tater Cowgirls. This is in California. Peace out, damn. Bow. Hello, I promised you part two of my backyard herbs and vegetable garden. After I showed you the front row last in the last video. And I'm still at the front row here because we got a new one here. It's high sub. Uh, officinalis and it has medicinal properties you can use it in a tea to against uh, bronchitis calves or uh, for bruises and uh, burns it's a soothing quality 
and the fresh leaves can be used as herb. It's raining in California as you can see and my garden actually looks horrible because my husband turned it into three construction zones. <laughs> this is Billy the Bull. He has to hold the boards he, which he painted for the vegetable garden. He redoes my high riser in the vegetable garden and paints the boards because the old boards are completely rotted. So they're lying here and have to be taken away. <coughs> but nevertheless, I show you a few of my herbs which I have here along the wall to my neighbor's house and we build a wall. I can't mow the garden right now because he has all these construction zones everywhere. So <laughs> bear with me. So this is just a, a plant of, you know, um, this is, this is a lemon balm. I also have one in the vegetable garden, which I'll show you later. And we all know what lemon balm is for. Um, tea. No, cold drink. Then here is uh, peppermint, nice ingrown peppermint. This is German chamomile, has no blossoms yet. Then here is Italian parsley. And we go up here. I planted Tulsi, which is um, also medicinal herb. Uh, uh, healing herb and uh, we also have nice flowers once once they come up this here is pineapple sage it smells like pineapple when you rub the leaves and uh, I love sage this is uh, cilantro in Germany they don't have the word cilantro they call it coriander here in in America we call only the the fruit I mean when it blossoms and we get this little kernels this is called coriander here in the US in Germany everything is called coriander they don't have the word cilantro and this one here is a German thyme German thyme smells really delicious here is Basil, everybody knows basil because everybody likes car uh, tomato salad with basil or pizza. This one I thought would not grow but it comes came back so I have actually two basils in here which I grew from small. And here, that's, this is garden sage so both here are sage and look totally different. This is garden sage. And here we have Italian oregano and it's raining crazy here. This here is caraway seed. So here in these uh, blossoms they will form the seeds once they are ripe. Then I can harvest it. That's a huge plant if you can look. So if you see the, the thing here. And here how big this is. And here I have sweet, sweet marjoram and that one I almost died but it came back it likes to hang down here so full sun all these herbs have full sun and here is uh, just a garden plant there's lots of grass in it which I need to rip out it's like tropical rain right now okay this is just uh, for decoration the plants then here I don't know if you know what that is this is um, called uh, garden lovage or as we call it muggy herb and if you know muggy muggy bottles the spice the liquid spice you put in soups and stuff this is from that so in, in German it's Liebstöcke here it's lovage or muggy herb I also have those growing on the fence um, near uh, next to my high riser and I have a snail problem they really love those leaves so <laughs> they ate all my garden lovage so I decided to put one in the container and it seems to come up really good 
grows almost as fast as the weeds around it, the grass around it, which my husband has yet to mow. This is just not the snake, the um, plants, aloe vera, aloe vera, an old plant for my husband. This is Mexican tarragon, good with beans. Here we have stevia, we all know stevia, the sweetener, natural sweetener. There's a cacti, there's a big cactus by the way, that's nopales. You can eat the leaves, the fresh leaves, but I don't care for it, but <laughs> you can. It's, it's actually a native plant here. And we have dill, and this is, um, let's see, chocolate peppermint. Grows really nice. It's a chocolatey flavor. It's really good in black tea. And here is chives, which I cut already. <laughs> I cut them regularly when I cook because I use them. So it's that. And now we turn towards the construction zone, which looks horrible. I will show you the vegetable garden once it's set up again. Here is my uh, lemon tree and you see it has blossoms right now. So it has three growth cycles, cy cycles at once. It's a, it's a, um, a small le a Meyer lemon tree but it has hundreds of lemons. I already have the freezer full of lemons. Here are the black, the, the yellow ones, and you have the blossoms, and you have the growing ones. Let me show you a green one. Here's a green one, rather green one. So all the cycles are on there right now. It's, look at all the lemons still on there. And I have already two trays of frozen lemon juice in the freezer. So this, this tree is really, really producing. Um, it's called a dwarf lemon tree go back a little you see the size it's not, so it's easy to pick because it's not so high and next to the lemon tree we have a little bird bath here in the back it's a little bird bath they love it and my roses here the roses are called St. Jacob's Rose and uh, they start pink then turn red and then yellow uh no pink yellow and then white so um they have three different um saint jacob's coat i think that's what they call it and i, I got it um our market here uh, uh, home depot wanted to throw away and i got it for free it was on the on the on the um pile that trash pile of plants i took it home because i like the rose colors and uh within three four years now it grew to a giant rose bush and they really smell good when they are in the yellow stage they really smell good okay this is just a little white flower that is on the fence and we've made a fence here We made a fence here because the, otherwise the dogs are going in my vegetable garden and I don't want that <laughs> because I don't want to, to pee in my vegetable garden. This is also why I have my herbs on the on the shelves in my on the, you know on, not on the floor. So this is where my husband is working right now. He destroyed my high riser, which is two boards high usually and it goes all the way back so I dug my tile out this is my little bench garden bench around here towards the fence is a rosemary a really big rosemary which I have to cut down so it takes everything in here is a pomegranate it grows really well it's tall the pomegranate already has little see little 
blossoms there will turn into pomegranates. Okay. Then along here is a, another lemon balm. And a cucumber, which I will put in the high rise once my husband is done with it. Here is a, uh, a spearmint. And this is a pepper, a purple pepper, sweet pepper. This is more muggy herb, garden lowage. As you see, snails ate it. So I put one in my container. I put beer here for the snails to drown in. And uh, like my friend, she did the same. She put beer out because snails like beer. And then a hedgehog came and took the snails out of the beer and ever since the hedgehog comes back and wants more beer <laughs> so I don't know I have to watch it and this is uh, one of my tomato plants 4th of July that's our favorite tomato plant hard to get I got it from Yamagami in Cupertino they're ready at 4th of July and have an awesome awesome taste for sauces I made to I make tomato sauces with it here uh, will be a sunflower, two sunflowers, but they are not, I see them sprouting, but they're not there yet. And <clears throat> this is another tomato plant. And here is a blackberry bush. This is going to be a blackberry bush. And that's it for now, except of the wildflowers. So I'm, I'm having wildflowers growing here everywhere. Um, I have because uh, I like um, bees and butterflies, hummingbirds having food. So I also here there will be wildflowers coming up. I'm not gonna, you know, have no plants next to my herbs. So I leave the wild plants in there too. And the, the roses again. Is the lemon tree? Now let's close the things. Because the dogs might come out. And uh, where is my, my swing? And here's the sad part I have to tell you, which you don't know. Our bunny is dead. He died two days ago. So rest in peace. This is one bunny. We already bought a new hutch, bunny hutch, and we give it away now. That one, Chuck, that's an old one. Yeah, so this is it. This is the front row again. You see we have strawberries. So the first harvest already happened. We have strawberries hanging on there. Almost ready to harvest. There's more here, see? There we go. Strawberries. Cool. Anyway, this is it. Part three will happen when my high riser is back in session and then I show you what we planned.